Hey everyone, I'm Bonnie Hunter. Welcome to the basement for Quilt Cam on this first day of October 2014. I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. I've pulled out something I haven't worked on for probably a couple months or what at least feels like a couple months while I've been working on the mystery and other things going on. The Endless String Spider Web. Since October is Halloween month, it's nice to have uh, something kind of Halloween-y to work on, even if it's not green and black and orange and whatever. I would like to see this um, finished. I've been working with all kinds of fun fabrics in here. I've got some vintage pieces. Yes, this is a hexagon that is stitched on the end of this unit here. I've got some old Laurel Birch Christmas favorite, favorite pieces, some uh, Civil War double pink next to a modern turquoise, some um, indigo from South Africa. This is the shui shui, or we just called it, we just called them indigos. I don't know what they call them now. Um, and just some different things. Working my way through baskets of scraps. You can see I've got piles over here. My iron's on so I can iron strips as I go. I'm sewing on a 1950s it says a uh, household machine made in Japan. There were all kinds of machines made um, in Japan right after World War II. And these machines were made by various companies from Toyota to Brother to um, whatever companies there were. And these were often badged in lots by whatever name the seller wanted put on it. So just because it says household doesn't mean there was a company called household. That could have just been a brand name that was badged and stuck on here. Somebody else would like the same machine and order however many thousands of that same model, they would put the name of the store on that machine. So we often find odd brand names that nobody can seem to find um, any history on because the badged name was not the maker at that time. Uh, Japan was in high production um, with sewing machines and other household equipment um, during that time. I've got emails coming in already. If you've not watched me on Quilt Cam before and you're watching on the blog, you can leave your comment in um, the comment section of the blog post itself and that will reach me in my email. If you leave your comment in the guest book, the blue guest book button is in the left hand sidebar of the blog at quiltbill.blogspot.com and that will also get to me. What I can't answer is um, any comments that you leave on Facebook or things like that because I'm actually not in that program right now. Um, we are here live in uh, Google Plus and it's gonna be streaming through YouTube and be archived on YouTube when it's all done. So there's just a couple formats and if I'm gonna answer your questions, it needs to come to my email so I can access it on my phone since the laptop really is quite a ways away from where I am right now. I wanna do some sewing. In order to do this, um, the pattern for the string spider web is free. It's on my blog. You just get it from the, the free patterns tab. I've cut kites. These are these are my, my solid kites. And I've used a, just a tiny bit of... We're going to put that on vibrate really quickly. I knew I would forget to do something. I'm going to stick that on vibrate. Okay. And I use a little bit of glue stick. Just regular school glue. If I can find one in here. Elmer's washable school glue. We've got that on here um, just to stick the kites in place. And then uh, that helps us not to have to pin anything to the paper. I've got my stitch length set way down so that the paper will be really easy to remove. And the reason I use paper is because we're dealing with a lot of bias and I want to be sure that this holds stable. If I was using fabric, it would still have bias and things could get stretched out of shape. I like to sew and remove my paper after I'm done trimming. These are some here that I trimmed this afternoon. So when we're done, we just trim it the size of the paper. And then the paper just easily, easily comes off. This paper is phone book pages. If you followed me for a while, you know that I don't like to buy things that I have to remove from a quilt. And if I buy any kind of anything, it better show on the front of the quilt, not be a hidden thing inside. So I'm just gonna take this paper off. It's just the paper just comes just right off. So now this one is ready. Whoops. 
for adding to the quilt right here. Deep paper, just that fast. So no, I don't have a problem removing paper. And if you've ever had trouble removing paper, likely it's because your stitch was way too big. You were lazy with your stitch length. So just get that down. Mine is set at, well, the, on here it's just about two and a half. This one doesn't have um, stitches per inch marked. But on a digital machine, like computerized machine, that would be about a 1.5. And I've got my iron on. So yeah, strings strings are strips any width. I will use them from three fourths all the way up to probably no wider than two and a half inches in this. And I want a lot of variety, and I don't want too many things that are too wide. I want more than three pieces across this kite. In fact, these have one, two, three, four, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five or six pieces to each side. And of course, that's just a, a suggestion and it will vary. We're gonna sew here. This first seam is a quarter inch seam. Or as close to a quarter inch as I can get it. So that we don't lose the star points when the blocks are joined together. This is a very quiet machine. And here's one I've already started. Here. I apologize for turning my back. There's just no other place to put the iron than right over there because I'm using this work surface out here and you need to be able to see what I'm doing. So here I've got two strips added on and I'm going to continue to add to either side. I mostly um, sew strips one on each side to start and then I can decide which side I want to work on. I might fill all the way this way or I might skip back and forth. Um, it just depends on which side the scrap looks better. Looks like I caught a little bit of a pleat there. I'm going to trim that off. Okay. So as I'm working, will that one fit? Nope, that one's a little short. That can go next round. I'm just looking for things that I have not used yet. I like that one. Things in different widths. And let's say I've used blue on this side already. I will not use another blue down here. I want Lots of variety, so more colors the better. Lots of differences in uh, strip width as well. Okay, don't hang up on me, machine. I find with lots of strips like this being sewn onto a, a foundation, I do need an iron to uh, keep things flat. Who knows how old some of these fabrics are? They've been around a long time. I'm using just two pieces, two kites at a time, each one is chasing the other, and it makes it very easy to maintain my chain that way. I get to see a lot of progress being made versus just sewing one strip down every single kite and then having to reel them all in, trimming them all, pressing them all before I can sew another seam. So two units in a circle works really well for me. There's a bright green. I think I like the bright green on the other side better. So you just decide which side of that kite this piece wants to go. I do like to extend my pieces about a quarter inch beyond the paper so that I have room to trim and that helps me avoid any whoops, I didn't sew it big enough. So just one more, and then we'll check to see who's tuning in with us tonight. Now this one probably goes down to where things are too skinny. This was probably in a gifted bag of strings, and so I would say right there is about three-fourths of an inch. So this stuff is all too small, and I'm just going to pitch that.
it's always fun to see otherwise unusable scraps turn out to be so beautiful. All right, let's check to see who's checking in with us tonight. I did have one message, and this message is from, uh, this is a shout out to Joey and Dawn at the Against the Grain Quilt Shop in Mineral Point, Wisconsin. That's from my friend Mickey Dupree, who said, sorry you missed us both. <laughs> I wasn't there, I was in Michigan, but she was in the shop and you weren't there. So this is again for Joey and Dawn at the Against the Grain Quilt Shop in Mineral Point. All right, and this is from the email here. Gotta get to that page. Lois from Kansas says, so glad for Quilt Cam. I have been watching you all day while I quilt, but now live. And she's quilting on her pumpkin table topper. I'm going to pop that up right here. Oh, that's gorgeous. So there's her pumpkin table topper. And really getting the fall feeling going on there. That's beautiful, Lois. My poor phone is just having fits. It doesn't like this card at all. And we're down to 27% battery. <laughs> Let's hope that it lasts. Okay. Julianne says, welcome home. Julianne from Northern California here. Thanks for quilt cam. I always look forward to it. I finished my scrappy spider web quilt top and got it quilted. Now for the binding. Yay. Thanks for all the great patterns. So looking forward to the new mystery in a couple weeks. And she says, yippee. So she's re ready to go. Mystery is going to. Um, happen in uh, just a couple of weeks we're going to do the yardage requirements and we will have the fabric um, yardage and the colors and the everything ready to go well this is a message says that there's no audio and this is from carol um, if there's no audio carol you're the first one i've heard it from and nothing else is coming in from anybody and this one's from Tazzy, who says, good morning from down under. Hopefully she can hear me. Here's some new messages. Live, live, live. This one is from uh, Stephen, who says, catching you live tonight while I work on market bags from my Arts Council's uh, Christmas Holiday Bazaar, where your ears burning last week. I attended Ricky Tim's um, super seminar in Connecticut and sat next to two ladies who drove down from Rhode Island last year to your retreat. The three of us were the only ones doing hexes at our table. Excited to take part in my first ever mystery quilt. Thanks again for all you do and best. And that's from Stephen in Putnam County, New York. So glad you could tune in with us. Stephen, can you hear me? Somebody said that we have no audio. So hopefully the problem is not just my end. Um, Quilter Kathy says, happy to be with you live on Quilt Camp tonight. I'm hand quilting a block sampler quilt and hoping to make some progress while listening to you. She says listening. So listening must be a good thing. Somebody let me know if you can hear me. Okay, Elaine. Oh, this is for our workshop coming up in San Diego. That is wonderful. I'm so excited. I will be in um, San Diego October 9th. Um, and for the following week after that and looking forward to seeing all the quilters uh, there who will be coming out and Let's see. I think that's oh, here's one for yay quilt cam from Susan Erler who says welcome back from your trips and thanks for having quilt cam tonight I started cutting out the pieces for the Smith Mountain morning quilt that I'm doing in blue brown and cream batiks should be different Tonight, I'm starting to take apart a, to, and clean a Singer 66 treadle machine. Isn't that wonderful? Those machines are just fabulous. I just love the vintage machines. And she sent a picture of the one that she is putting uh, back together right there. She's working on it. Looks like a beautiful little red eye. Really pretty. Okay. She says she's doing the happy dance over there. Jan says she hears me. Have I tried the new 301s? Oh, yes. Yesterday I got, um, well, I was a bad girl. You see, I have been on the wagon as far as buying uh, machines go for quite a long time. And uh, I fell off the wagon thanks to Craigslist. And <laughs> there were two very, very, uh, let's just say affordable 
Singer 301s um, from the same seller. One was a little bit more than the other. One of them needs a little bit more work. Uh, I'm not listing prices here, but um, one was missing a presser foot and had no bobbin case. So there, there is there is stuff that I'm going to have to buy to get it up and running. And uh, the most precious thing of all was what was written on the case of one of the machines. And it said something about true friends and families are sewn together, blah, 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 blah. Uh, love, Brooklyn. And it was like a, a little girl had written this um, in her child's handwriting with a red crayon on the outside of her grandmother's sewing machine case because it said grandma and grandpa on it as well. And I'm sure grandma probably threw a fit, either that or she, or she loved what she wrote. So these two machines came home and they're dirty and they're pretty disgusting. And they, the good thing is, is that the electricals are good on both of them. Um, it's just going to take a lot of work and I didn't have time today. Today was for dentistry and getting book orders out and, and working some more on some projects in the studio. And I really need a full day where I do nothing but get my fingernails dirty to clean these. So that's going to probably happen this winter during my time home from travel. But yes, two three Oh ones came home and uh, <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, just, just smiling and the family just shakes their head and they don't even they don't even say anything anymore mary says loud and clear maybe she needs to unmute her screen i'm glad you could rescue those machines i would love a 301 or a treadle both are on my want list you know and i, and I just i love them all um just have to i don't know what it is you just just have to rescue the babies and i may home rehome them at some point but if i find them they're coming home with me Let's see what we got in here. Oh, we got gingham. Uh, nope, I already got blue in there. So we're going to stir the pot here. How about, yeah, some Christmas. When in doubt, sew some Christmas on it. So I had somebody ask me earlier on Facebook if I would talk about hanging sleeves. And it's one of those things that, yeah, I could talk about it, but it's easier to show you. So in tonight's um, blog post where this feed is embedded, be sure to click the link about the bindings and the hanging sleeves. I just do a very simple hanging sleeve. Oh, we got a little piece. Perfect. It'll fit. Um, I cut my fabric strips eight inches wide, cut it, you know, a couple inches shorter on each end than than my uh, width of my quilt. I hem both raw edges, press it in half, and I stitch it in place at the top of the quilt so that the binding will cover the top raw edges. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory. I do not put any pleats or leave any extra fullness in my hanging sleeve because I don't feel like that makes a difference with the hanging rod. The quilt is gonna hang by the weight of the bar at the at the top up against the binding so i don't i don't leave an extra pocket to make room for a a rod on i mean really it's still going to hang three-dimensionally no matter what you do so uh it's just simple but if you click that link you'll see pictures and how i how i um add it on there and you might want to start adding hanging sleeves to any of your good sized quilts um as you go, I pretty much put a hanging sleeve on anything that will be a class sample or maybe hung as a wall hanging or maybe entered in a show. Those three things. Baby quilts don't get hanging sleeves because I don't want the family to hang a baby quilt on the wall. I want the baby to be using that hanging, that, that hanging sleeve, that quilt. Speaking of which, I have a baby quilt that needs to be made before January. So guess what I will also be doing um, this holiday break coming up. Now you're probably thinking Thanksgiving's a long ways away. It's really not. Okay, so we're just working side by side, filling this up. One thing I want to be sure to do is leave myself a good inch at the end. I don't want any seams closer than one inch from this point. So I want to make sure that my last seam goes somewhere up here, not down here, because it's going to get really big and bulky as it is. 
string quilts uh, by necessity are heavy and and uh, seam heavy. Uh, what do we got in here? We need some pink or something. Here's a here's a purple piece that'll work. And this one I think is a little bit wide. So I'm going to flip it in half. And this is one of those really, really cool indigos where it's one pattern on one side. It's a, it's a burgundy resist is what I would call it. But the other side also has pattern. So I can use both sides. And I have no idea how old this fabric is or where it even came from. It could be a very, very old piece. But I am going to make it go a lot farther by just cutting it up the center. And drop half of it on the floor. Okay. So I have had a very, very busy whirlwind month since the last time we did a can. I've been from Illinois to Ketchikan, Alaska, to Buffalo, New York, to Davison, Michigan, to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and home again. And it's been fabulous. We had wonderful weather everywhere that I went, and it seems like I was just running ahead of the storm as far as uh, getting out of town before the weather got bad. Got lots of thready stuff here. We're going to get rid of that thready stuff. I think. I like the black one down there. But string quilts are just my most favorite kind of quilt to make. Every scrap has a story, whether it tells me it does or not. Ooh, green polka dot. We like green polka dot. Now, when I get down to the end, and I think I can do that here. Sometimes the best idea for me is to put that, that last piece sideways so that I can flip it all the way up, where if I put it this way, it's going to leave me too close to the end. And remember, I've got a, a quarter inch seam allowance already built into this paper piece. So this way is not good, but this way is. So as you work with stuff, you'll learn um, where to stop and where to turn it and what's the best use of your fabric scrap. I haven't found anything I want to put next to that yet, so I'm thinking, all right, it's kind of hideous, but this brown batik is calling my name. You know, this kind of fabric, it reminds me what we used to do with Easter eggs as a kid. You know, when you would dunk it in this one and dunk it in this one and dunk it in this one, and then your poor Easter egg was just brown, not a rainbow. It was brown. <laughs> Well, we're going to use it anyway. I'm going to give myself a little bit larger. Seems to be just bogging down a little bit when it hits a thick spot. Okay, so that worked really well. We've covered that point completely by putting that strip sideways. I have some fun ideas for the layout of this quilt. All right, 
right, one more, and then we'll check for some more emails. Now this piece I know came from the cap, the, the top of a sleeve of recycled fabric. This is the curve from the top of a sleeve. Red gingham next to brown batik, you betcha. And I think we're gonna do that about there. Your seams don't have to be straight. They can taper and angle. In fact, it's more fun if they do. Oh yeah, my stitch was too small. See, my paper was already coming apart. So that's good that I made the stitch a little bit bigger. And then there are times where we're having an out of bobbin experience, like right now. Okay. Yeah. I planned ahead. I have one extra. I really like the class 15 machines. The bobbins are huge as compared to featherweights and uh, 66 machines. Oops, gonna go the other way. So the class 15 really can hold a lot of thread. And we're back in business. That might have been why the machine was bogging down a bit. When the bobbin gets down to the end, sometimes the doesn't like to unwind this easily. This tails off. When you're string piecing like this, feel free to use up all of those odd bobbins of different colors you've got lying around. The only thing that I wouldn't piece with would probably be something like a dark red or a black or a navy. Anything else in the medium range, as long as your stitches don't show and you don't see any shadowing through, you're good to use that, that thread up. Get it gone. All right, so here's another place where I'm probably going to put my piece sideways so that it covers that tip, and I need something wide enough. Okay, how about that brown batik again? It's on the other one. All right, let's check what you're up to, and hopefully my phone won't die, because every time I pick it up, I, you know, I cheaped out on these cords. I bought cords off of Amazon that were not Samsung cords, and I am not happy with them, because if I move the cord, then the, the phone doesn't charge. So we've got some messages. Let's check those out. <laughs> it was Mickey who says, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And she has audio, no worries. So we're, we're good there. Hopefully she's having fun in her basement sewing along as well. And we've got back in the email here. Okay, Julianne says, I can hear you just fine. Thank you so much. Loretta says, I love my Singer 301. Just a great workhorse. You're right. You know, they will do between 13 and 1,500 stitches a minute. They can almost sew just as fast as the Jukies or the other um, straight stitch workhorse machines that are out there. Um, I love the slant needle feature because it puts the needle at a very visible angle. So if you're doing something like paper piecing where you want to sew on a line, sewing on a, a slant needle machine is just the best way to go. Um, it just, it's, 
so easy and i just it, i just love it there's no belt it's all gear driven there's i can't say enough good things about the 300 series or the 400 series um with singer those were all slant needle i believe the five the, was the 500 series a slant needle also i've got a um rocketeer up at the cabin i'll have to check and see i don't remember i think it is also and we have Sherry who says, Hexies, you have me hooked. Oh, she sent photos too. I've been watching your progress on your Hexies quilt and I thought I would just try it to see if I would like it or not. <laughs> Famous last words, girl. She says, I started sometime in August and as you can see, I just can't stop. I have almost enough blocks for a quilt already. So I'm going to, she sent three photos. I'm going to show you the one of her blocks all assembled and stacked up there she's been working on those hard and she looks like she works the same way i do i build my unit as i baste so i don't want a container of just a bunch of basted hexagons that are um not sewn to each other so i will baste one sew it on baste another sew it on baste another sew it on because i like to see the progress as this thing is growing and i've got a, a section for my current hexagon project that is ready to be added to the mothership when I get to the cabin tomorrow as well. Oh, here's her bin of color. Can you see the bin of color? Yes, this is my cord. See, I am attached. I am attached and it's like a lifeline, but it's still not charging unless I hold that cord just right. So if we die, you know why? Well, the, the camera won't die, but my ability to be able to answer your questions may die. Okay. Gorgeous. As long as I hold the cord and I see that little lightning bolt thing in the battery, we're good. But we're sitting right now at 25% battery. Betsy Golden, what's she sewing? Tonight I'm sewing the blocks together for the first two baby quilts for my new twin grandbabies expected in February. Wow. Twin grandbabies. That's sweet. Like you said, Thanksgiving isn't far away and we are having a baby shower that weekend. My granddaughter, who is 12, will also be making flannel receiving blankets with me. Lots of pretty flowery fabric. So there's lots of girl stuff going on. That is so neat. Yeah, I'm going to be making a little boy quilt and I'm really excited. Um, my, my brother and his wife, Nicole, already have um little elizabeth who's three and she's going to be the big sister so they've got the girl and now they're going to have the boy so that's really exciting patty banister says quill cam watching on youtube tried to tune in on your blog but just wouldn't work i was wondering do i need to order your rulers for the mystery quilt i can't wait this will be my first mystery quilt doing bow tie blocks tonight while watching and thinking about how to quilt the last sash on my granddaughter's quilt she wants princess crowns how fun love quilt cam i will be giving that information with the yardage requirements on october 15th so when you come to the blog on October 15th to find out about our colors and our yardage and the other background information, like the name of the quilt and what the inspiration was, I will also let you know what specialty things you'll, you'll need and find helpful. Of course, as always, I will give regular rotary cutting measurements as well as the special specialty ruler cutting just in case there are those who don't have access to the rulers or anything like that so um, if you have a favorite method of doing something like let's say you have a favorite method for flying geese there are no flying geese in this quilt by the way or whatever other shape um, you can use that method because I'll give you the finished size of the unit so that you just use your own math to um, do whatever method you want for that unit so just stay tuned couple more weeks you'll have that information on the specialty rulers so here is sue in upstate new york who says quilt cam is perfect for tonight it is just what i needed to push me to get the sashings and cornerstones cut for two little monkey quilts i have going making the blocks were so much fun when i counted i had enough for almost two so i just made a few more blocks these will go to the local hospital to be given out to someone with a new baby. Thanks for the pattern. And that's Sue in upstate New York. Glad to hear that. Let's see. We're going to scroll down just a little bit. Cindy Peters. There's my friend Cindy Peters. Hey, girl. She says, audio is fine here. Enjoying my first quilt cam. We'll use your ideas for tops for my church quilters. Awesome sauce. So Cindy Peters is my go-to person when there is a vintage sewing machine part 
that I can't seem to find like a shuttle for a treadle or bobbins or belts or gaskets or thingamadoodles. Cindy Peters has them and you'll find her at stitches in time at I think it's earthlink.net is her email. So if there's um, any specialty parts that you're looking for for your vintage sewing machine, her, her prices are reasonable. She takes PayPal. She takes a check. She'll get it right out to you. And she's um, just, just very easy access. So she's on speed dial for me. Glad you could join with us tonight, uh, Cindy. Let's see. Myrna says, you're coming in loud and clear in Southern Kentucky, enjoying watching Quilt Cam tonight. And that's my friend Myrna. Glad to have you joining us. Hope you're sewing along. Uh, top of the... Uh, email here. Why am I tripping over my tongue today? I guess I am so frustrated hoping that this, that we're down to 24% battery, hoping that the phone stays on. Hi from Utah, working on straight line quilting, a solid challenge quilt that must be finished for Guild on Saturday. And that's from Katie. And she sends a photo and she's got us on the big screen. And it looks like she's pieced, got pieced hearts on her quilt. And we're on the big screen right there. So she's getting a good close look at my crow's feet. <laughs> so glad you could join us. I'm going to set this down and hopefully it will do a little bit of charging. Please give me a little bit more than 24%. Am I still charging? Yeah, we're going to sew some more. As if one basket of strings wasn't enough, I also grabbed another big basket. And uh, I just, I just love to do this. One of the string quilts that is on my bucket list to do again, and maybe we should have a string quilt along. There's a pattern on the website called String X. It was one of the first string quilts that I posted to the free patterns tab. And I have made those and give them given them all away. They were the ones that I did for as the charity quilt person for my guild. And I'm feeling the need to make a string X quilt that actually stays with me. I'd like to offer that one as a workshop. So maybe that's something that we can do after the mystery is over. Maybe early in the new year. If you've wanted to work on a string quilt, string X is a very easy one and you'll find that one under the free patterns tab. Okay, now I think I can put this back down a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I think when I was having trouble it was because the bobbin thread was running out. Okay. So here's a, another little happy mix. We've got batiks and brights and Civil War and Christmas and giant modern flowers. We are all genre here. Okay. I like to leave a short pile of short pieces by my machine so that I can quickly use those up as I go. I like that one there. And if I cut that there, that may leave me a big enough piece for the tip of something else. So the two 301s will eventually get a good going through, but I just don't have time this week. No, too About a brown polka dot. Yeah. Okay, so here's another spot where, yes, a sideways strip is going to just cover this, and I wouldn't want any seams any closer than this to this point. So if you get up in here, chances are you're going to move your next strip down a little bit and make the previous strip more narrow, but you just don't want any seams up in that point because it's going to get too bulky too quickly. What have we not used yet? Uh, two 
blue. I've got way too much blue in this thing. How about some pink? Let me just cut a hunk. But it really does get to the point where you realize you just can't throw away anything. Because <laughs> you can sew it in somewhere. Okay, so we've got a red one and a brown one. And I will just decide which side that scrap looks best and just continue to add on to this one. I'd like to have this one be at least a full size. There's plenty of scraps for it. So as long as there's fabric left, keep sewing. Yesterday was my first day home after spending most of September gone. And I do this nesting thing. I get home and all of the bedding needs to be changed. I want new sheets, clean towels, all of that kind of stuff. And I also decided to switch out the quilts that are on the bed. And decided, yes, 1st of October, it's two quilt season. So there's two quilts on the bed. Do you do that at your house? Do you switch your quilts out and with the season and maybe change up? My, my paint is neutral in my house. So I can, I can totally change the look of the room just by changing the quilts on the bed. And I like it that way. Neutral carpet, neutral walls, and very nondescript drapes. Okay. okay, so this side's done. I'll continue to add on this side. I like to piece a few, depaper a few, or trim a few and depaper a few before I sew these together all of the paper will be out so that they are just triangles. And that makes it really, really easy to uh, join the units together. The last thing I wanna do is pick paper out of seam allowance. Sadie's at the door and she's wagging her tail looking at somebody who's on the stairs. And I think that it may be the hubster who has been busy installing new vanity and bathroom sink in the master bathroom. He was grumbling about leaky faucets and the hoses and connectors and things. So I, I'm giving him a wide berth and letting him deal with it. Recycled plaid next to brown polka dot. We like. And that purple piece will just fit. What have we got here? See, you can tell when it's somebody else's scraps. Can you believe somebody put this in their giveaway scraps? There's some mighty good stuff in here. So I'm going to just make a snip and tear that piece off. And I'm going to set that. Oops. Ah! It used to be in my classes that I could go through the trash after class and there would be a ton of good stuff. Not so much anymore. What's up with people? They're taking it all home and they're sewing it into their quills. I'm putting this one sideways to cover that tip. And this one's still too little. We like to have the Christmas fabric be gone. Okay. A 
another one for the pile. These, we've already done one, two, three, almost four already. Wait, here's another one. This is the other one we did. Okay, so we've got a good stack going just in the course of this evening already. Okay, so we are going to check with Ness, who says, season premiere of Quiltville is on. <laughs> Just got home. Did I miss anything? Thanks for quilt cam tonight. And that's Ness from Wyoming. And I've decided to leave the, the phone on the table where the charger looks like it's doing its job. So pardon me if I'm looking down here. Mimi or Susan Yost says, Sadie Jane keeps wandering in and out of our view. Can you get her to come on for camera for a visit? Love quilt cam from Susan. Sadie, are you wandering in and out? And you keep people keep seeing you. Come here, Sadie. Come here, sweetheart. Come here. Sadie, come on. Come here. Come here. Can you jump up to me? Come on, jump up. Come see me. Come here. She thinks she's in trouble. Come here. Come here. She thinks she's in trouble. Can you say hi? Say hi over there. Look over there. Can I have kisses? Can I have kisses? Hmm? You think you're in trouble? You're not in trouble. Yeah, she, this, she is definitely the best dog ever. There she is. She's giving you a smile. Yeah, so that's Sadie. She hears me talking, and so she thinks there must be somebody else in here. And then she, she comes in, and there's nobody else in here, and I'm too busy to pet her, and she walks out. Yes. Do you kiss it? Yes, we love you. Okay, you want to get down now? Okay, good girl. So that's Sadie. I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did. Usually I can't get her to uh, to stay. She'll wander out. She may wander back in. Diana says, Quilt Maker article. Congrats on the article about you and Quilt Cam and the newest Quilt Maker. It was a nice article. And uh, I, I, if you haven't read that article yet, you'll want to pay attention to tomorrow's morning's blog post because there will be a giveaway of that issue um my my having quilt cam was featured um in the the newest issue of quilt maker just coming out i'm not sure if it's on newsstands yet or not but i'm featuring that into tomorrow morning's blog post with the giveaway so you'll want to be sure to come back and see that and this one is from Jerry Arch, who says, first time live quilt cam. I'm ready to quilt my spider web. Thanks for the inspiration to, to paper foundation piece. Wonderful. So glad that you tuned in with us tonight. I hope that it won't be your last time. Jen says, pink and purple monkey. She says, glad to see you home safe and sound. Loved all your posts. Last weekend, my little Gabby had her go-go visit. Very near all the grandkids' birthdays, they come to spend some time with me. Gabby has spent a lot of time pulling pinks and purples from my scrap basket. She's turning four next week. She told me over and over she needed a pink and purple quilt. I quilted it today and I'm ready to stitch the binding down. I love this pattern. Thank you. She says she's working on her lozenges tonight. And the photo she has here shows both the lozenges and the little monkey. We sure have a lot of talk of little monkey going on. If you want to know what we're talking about, um, under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog, scroll down to L for little and you'll find the free pattern for little monkey. It was a quilt that I made for my um, niece Elizabeth when she was born, the one who's going to have a baby brother in January. Uh, she says, couldn't wait to just put the put a few lozenges together just to see what they'd look like. Can't wait for the mystery to start. Stitch and Giggle are all participating. And this is from Jen. And let's biggie size her photo here so that you can see. She's got her lozenges right there and her little monkey in pinks and purples for her sweet granddaughter right there. Wonderful. All right, put this back down out here so it will charge. Tell you, frustrating these phones. And I'm down to 20%. How can that be? We're trying to get this to, <laughs> and of course it says to charge faster, use the charger provided with this, this phone. Uh, rats. Okay, those are darling. Ruth says, Quilt Cam, here's a little zipper bag I made while watching tonight. And she's showing her little zipper bag. And let's see if I can biggie size it without disconnecting my charger. That looks really, really great. So she's been busy in setting zippers during quilt cam. There is just nothing you can't do during quilt cam. 
I love that. She's got some little, looks like alphabet letters that are going to go in there for somebody to play with. Super job. All right, one more. This is from Vicki with a Y, or Vicki Y, who says, Welcome home. So glad I got to catch you live tonight. I can hear you just fine. Love those 301s. So jealous. Yeah, okay. And this one is from... Awesome, awesome. She says from Susan Crane in Lexington, uh, South Carolina, which is near where we used to live. We were in Irma, which was on the other side of the, of the Dam Dam. And she says, "Thanks for quilt cam. I can hear you. I've been teaching my daughter to sew, and we found these fantastic, fantastic Girl Scout fabrics. So she has been making her first quilt." And tonight I caught her sewing some on her own. She is 12. I am so thankful that my own mother taught me to sew. I hope she appreciates it like I did. It sure sounds like she will, and it looks like she's sewing on a pink atlas. Holy cow. I am pulling this to see if I can get the picture to Biggie size here. It's kind of a duo picture here. It was inserted into the email, so let's see. i got to move it. No, i got to move it this way. <laughs> She's kind of working in mirror image here. She's sewing on her pink atlas machine, and there's some of the fabrics that she's using right there. Isn't that great? Now charge, stupid phone, because you're down to 19%. All right, I'm going to let that phone just sit there a minute. And I'm going to click that. Okay, let's get sew some more here. So yes, I have a new master bath redo going on upstairs, and it's been going on for months. Some of you might remember that we took our old um, shower tub combo out and put in a walk-in shower, and it's just fabulous. I love it. It's roomier. It's wider than our tub was. We had enough room to be able to come out a little bit wider, and there's since been a new toilet put put in which it sits taller which is great for tall people i tell you what when i go to use you know in, in a public restroom or whatever where the toilets are back down to normal height it's like you feel like you're almost going to completely fall in because you're so used to uh sitting a little taller which is great and now the vanity redo so the the mirror is off the wall the old vanity is out the new vanity is in the new new sink top is in and hubby's um reconnecting the water tonight so there's been no water in that bathroom for a while so we've been brushing teeth in the kitchen and all that kind of stuff and uh the new i've got a new medicine cabinet that goes over that whole vanity area so there'll be storage behind the mirror instead of just a mirror flat against the wall and i can't wait because the bathroom really is small it's a small um bathroom Probably no, not much bigger than you'd have, say, in a hotel bathroom or whatever. Um, but it can be the space could be made more usable with the addition of this stuff. So I'm really excited. And uh, house renovation stuff can be so frustrating. You know, it just it just can be. It's hair raising. In fact, I was watching Leah Day on. Uh, Instagram and she's been tearing out red carpet and she was so excited for her new flooring and they were really working hard to get out this red carpet thinking that maybe there would be gorgeous hardwood underneath and she pulled it up and the caption was something like everybody else removes carpet and has a gorgeous solid wood floor I remove carpet and find butt ugly linoleum <laughs> <laughs> and I just I just laughed at her frustration because I've been there this house has been a, uh, a work in progress since the day we moved in. It's just a 1970s story and a half bungalow cottage kind of house. But we love it. turquoise and red this is turquoise and aqua and red have just been my latest color love 
just love that combo. And of course, orange. Everything is better with a little bit of orange. And I think that piece is big enough. Ooh. This was one of my favorite shirts. Back in the 90s, when we lived in Idaho, I had a group of girls that we used to go line dancing once a week. And that was our, our exercise class. And we would go down to the little local restaurant pub thing, and, and they would play the country music, and we would take line dance lessons, and then we would stay when the band started, and we would, we would line dance till the cows came home. I don't know how many calories we burned, but we worked up a sweat, and I loved it dearly, and then we moved away. But this shirt eventually bit the dust, and I have used it in small increments in several of my quilts, um, especially the scraps and shirt tails quilts. Can you see? It's got kind of that that turquoisey, purpley, paisley sort of looking thing, and that poisony green background. Favorite fabric ever. So every time I see this shirt, I think about those fun times. Of course, there's nothing really left of the shirt now except for what's in the string box. This is what was left after cutting the shirt down. But I love how fabric has memory, so it's really fun to pull those out and use them up. In fact, I think this little piece I just cut off, is that big enough? Yeah, right there. We need something like black. Where's that? That'll do. It's kind of a black fatigue. Things are just looking kind of pale. So as I'm working down the, the sides of the spider web, like this one, if, if things were not looking very colorful over here on this side, I wanted to be sure that I put more color over here and that maybe I did not duplicate the colors on this side that were over here because we want to spread the color through the quilt and I want it to be exciting. I want people to look at every wedge, every piece, and uh, have them work together as a whole. I'm gonna put the black on this side. I think that'll look good. And then there are those little things like grandma florals. What do you do with grandma florals? Cut them small. This is, you know, what we call the, the Laura Ashley dress. You know, remember that with the drop waist and the big square sailor collar with the ruffle on it? White tights and flats. Yes, that was the style, 1990-something. We can cut it fairly small, sew it next to this purple, and it's not so bad. And yes, for anybody asking, I would use this fabric as a neutral because it's on a cream ground. Even though the flowers are pink and purple and the leaves are green, to me, this is a neutral. It's very light. Okay. And you can even use the back side if you felt like the front side was too loud. Black and orange. That's my Halloween streak right now. Thank you. 
this little piece of green polka dot is just perfect to lay sideways so that I will stitch it and it will flip up and cover the whole thing. I just love this machine. It weighs about 47 pounds. It's just a workhorse. One more piece, and this one will be done, and we'll look and see who else is joining us tonight. I think I can just straighten that up a little bit. There's this piece here. So do you see how nice it is to work with just two units at a time instead of having a long tangled chain of stuff that you have to cut apart and press several things before you can start sewing again this is just like sew one trim one sew one trim one sew one press one da -da 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 -da. and it just works so slick all right i'm going to screw it up here oh we're still hanging at 19 percent we just may make it before the <laughs> before the battery dies. This is restoring vintage machines during quilt cam. This is from Janet who says, so funny that you posted your strays today. Lori and I took your crumb piecing class in Amherst. I had the Centennial 99. Oh, it's that Janet. Hey Janet, Janet with a typewriter table. Yes. And Lori had a computerized Bernina. After hearing all about the vintage beauties all day in class that day, Lori decided she had to have a 301 too. Found her one this week, and I am just finishing up her spa time while watching Quilt time Cam. Can't wait until you are in New York again. And that's from Janet in Rochester. So Janet, if you've come across a machine that has really gunky nicotine tar buildup on it, I mean, this one is really crusted um, i'd love to know what you use to clean your machines i haven't tried with this one yet my first thought was that i would go with the gojo hand cleaner that that has no pumice in it and see if that'll budge anything but it, it's like in all the crevices and all the, the creases and cracks and and stuff like that this one is going to be just a booger to clean so if you have any idea of of what will work for a really really grungy um, mocha 301 let me know um, it, at least there's no decals or anything really to worry about other than where it says singer on the very top of the machine. Glad to hear from you. Glad to have had the chance to spend time with you in class. It was a ton of fun and glad that you're uh, sticking with us at, with Quilt Cam and hope to hear from you again. The woman, she is amazing. She brought that machine back from death, as she said. Alice says, I'm working on my new to me singer treadle, doing the Carolina chain on it, really develops treadle skills. And she sent a picture here, although the picture is sideways. So I wonder if I turn this sideways, will it stay sideways so that I can show you? No, it turned. You have to look quickly. Nope, it flipped again. <laughs> but she's got her blocks laid out there. That's beautiful, Alice. And this one, I'm going to put this back down here so the charger still says it's charging. Down to 18%. This one says, getting my quilt fixed through quilt cam, unable to sew as I am in the process of packing up to move to my new house across town. Can hardly wait to get my new space set up. And that's Laura in Jacksonville. Um, you know, that's that's the first thing. You know, when, I, when we bought this place, yes, it was older. Yes, it needed a lot of work. But the one thing that it had going for it was a whole basement for me. Uh, so the quilting, quilting space came first. I didn't care about the kitchen. I didn't care about the bathroom. I didn't care about the, the size of the this or the that. I just needed the quilting space and we made the right choice for this house. I can't wait until you get, get your set up. AJ, the quilting pot says, can hear you in Savannah. How are things in Savannah tonight? 
Elizabeth Allen says, I can hear you in, in Chapin. Wonderful. So this is Stephen Skybell, who also says, can hear you loud and clear. So these were coming in just great. We're going to do this up at the top here, and let's let that battery sit just a minute while we are sewing some more. Now, I leave on the 9th for um, San Diego. If I plan it right, we may be able to have one more quilt cam next week before I go. And I'll keep you updated on that. I'm going to be up at the cabin through the weekend. But I'm thinking we should be able to do quilt cam probably the 6th or the 7th. All right, that one's done. Let me just start another one. Oh, here's another one that's done. All right, and this is where I'm all out of the ones that I had pre-glued. So I'm going to use that little glue stick. And I like to just put a couple of dots down the center, just very lightly. It just needs to be enough to hold the kite in place because we don't want this to shift. If I pinned it, it would have more of a chance of shifting. And we're good to go. It's really fun to mix the older fabrics with the newer ones. You get some fun effects. For instance, this this brown polka dot is fairly new. This old VIP calico is not. So we are going to sew it on there anyway. I like to be sure to include some lights in my spider webs just to bring some daylight to the quilt, or else it's going to be a very, very dark quilt. If I just stayed with the bright colors and the darker fabrics, it needs to have some light ones. just to add some depth and some contrast. Things can't be dark all the time. And I still ended up sewing that upside down, didn't I? I don't know, can't tell. The rule is if you can't tell if it's upside down or not, it doesn't matter. One thing I like to do is make my choices quickly. As long as I haven't used that color before in this kite, I can use it again. And this piece is just big enough to do the job right here. And then it'll be gone. Now see that old VIP calico doesn't look so bad sewn between the more modern polka dots and the turquoise batik, right? Pretty fun stuff. Okay, so what can we add to this other side? It's looking very blue, red, green. We need something that's not blue, red, or green. I think I'm gonna have to use got this what is this looks like somebody's novelty fabric with kitty cats on it that works Green 
Will that work there? Just, just a bit. I love that when I can use up the very last tail end of something and there is nothing of it left. I did that today with a jar of peanut butter. Used an apple slice and just kind of got in there into that peanut butter jar, got every little bit out. There we go. All right. Let me, uh, we're getting down to the wire here. Battery still hanging in at 18%. Here's Ness who says, Years ago, we bought a house in Utah, and its past owner was a cigar smoker. Walls, windows, glass fixtures all covered from years and years of cigar smoke stain. I used plain blue Dawn to wash everything. It worked super great. Used as hot of water as I could stand also. Hope it helps. You know, that's a great idea, and I do have a bottle of Dawn in the kitchen, and that will cut through quite a bit of stuff. So I was thinking that plus the, what is it, the Mr. Clean eraser thing might help get some of that grunge out of the crevices and stuff too. I will definitely give that a try. Jackie Tucker says cleaning machines. I cleaned my mother's 401A nicotine mess with the Gojo and the brushes from my gun cleaning kit and toothbrushes. And so I will definitely try that. I've got the Gojo on hand as well. So maybe between the Dawn and the Gojo, I know the one thing to avoid is anything with alcohol because it will um, cloud the clear coat that's on there. This one is comes from a phone number, but it says Nancy in Iowa. She says, hi, Bonnie. Here's a pic of one of two strip pieced baby quilts. Love watching you. I always learn something new. Thanks for all you do. And she says, let's see. Looks like, oh, I love the half square triangles on the outside edge. So these are some string quilts that she's working on for baby quilt. Can you see that without too much reflection? You're probably getting the reflection of the, the fluorescent light above me. But it's just beautiful. Thank you for sending the photo. And we've got Janet who says restoring. She says, aha, oh, she sent a picture with bang, bathroom and shower cleaner. Just finished another 301 with the same nasty tar and nicotine on it. Um, and here's, the, she sent a picture of an album of the 301 restored using bang. Can you get that at, at any um, store, you know, Target, Walmart, wherever? Can you find that grocery store? Let me know where you got it and I will go look at it. If it's for a bathroom shower, Hopefully I can just find it locally. So we've now got Gojo, Bang, and Dawn Dish Soap. Okay, we'll give those a, a, a run through. Here's from Avon Bingham who says, the audio is great. That's great. She's working on UFOs. Colleen says, so nice to meet you in the Sioux. Colleen, I loved your photos. They were your, your quilts. They were so awesome. I'm so glad that you're watching along tonight. I, um, showed uh, a bunch of Colleen's quilts um, on the blog just the other night with a show and share post. So you'll be able to find that. She says, I will be working on hand sewing my Smoky Mountain Star quilt while we, while we watch you. Thank you for all you do in coming north. I can hear you just fine. And that's from Colleen. I'm going to read one more. And then I think we're going to call it a night because I'm now down to 15% battery. She says, this is from Marla, who says, no quilting for me tonight. Cleaning the house for Yom Kippur, but you are keeping me company as I move from room to room to room. So she's very, very busy. Um, so it looks like Yom Kippur must be starting. Does that start Friday? I haven't checked. So to all my Jewish friends out there, I want to wish you a wonderful Yom Kippur with your, with your family and your friends and relatives and good food and good memory making. And for the rest of us, we'll wish you the best first weekend in October of 2014 that there can ever possibly be. Ah, and the phone just, just is going. Okay. Well, this is Bonnie Hunter from the basement with Quilt Cam. And we're going to call it a good night here. If you are still up and at it and it's early where you are, you're three hours earlier than me on the, on the West Coast. Uh, so it's only 7 p.m. 
keep sewing. See if you can get a couple more blocks done. See if you can get a few more stitches in. See if you can cut down some more scraps. Just try to do just a little bit more. I'll be in touch through the weekend up from up at the cabin. I'm looking forward to spending some time up there and working on our mystery quilt. That's coming up real soon. We will um, let you know on quilt cam. I think we can do it once more before I leave for San Diego. So we're probably looking at the 6th or the 7th as the date. Just follow the blog and you'll know. Um, happy sewing, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight and making my evening f a fun one. And we'll catch you next time from the basement at Quiltville. Bye-bye.